So I'm going to be making a 10 turn helical antenna first for the 5.8 GHz spectrum and what I've got here is a piece of water pipe that is 1.5 centimeters diameter and uh, it's just perfect, the perfect diameter for the uh, 5.8 gigahertz spectrum and I'm going to be winding my coils around this so it'll be holding the coils in place and to protect it when it's all finished I've got a piece of waste pipe here and this is uh, 68 millimeters diameter which uh, again is pretty standard size and that's going to be the outer casing to connect this antenna up to the video receiver what I've got here is a panel mount SMA I uh, picked up 10 of these for 8 quid off eBay really cheap and for the back reflector I'm going to be using some aluminium sheet now because the panel mount comes with its own uh, nuts and screws we uh, don't have to worry about soldering to this so we can use aluminium and I've got some uh, copper wire here that I got out of some household electrical wire, some solid core household electrical wire and I've got around 400 millimeters in length here which should be plenty for this uh, antenna so you're going to have to download and print out the template for this and um, there'll be a link in the description of the video now you can cut this off to however many turns you want to make your helical antenna and got this little uh, gap here that I made at the bottom because that takes into consideration the actual dielectric of the panel mount so we can solder here onto the uh, center connector so we're not actually squidging it in it comes in at a nice angle to connect up to the uh, center connector here also this reflector the reflector the minimum size it has to be is the surface area of um, one wavelength so for the 5.8 gigahertz spectrum so the actual surface area is this square here now what I'm going to be using is a circle of course and the actual um, reflector itself can be bigger than the minimum there's actually no theoretical um, upper limit to uh, how big the reflector can be with a helical antenna but it must be a minimum of one wavelength square otherwise you start losing some of the power so I've gone ahead and I've actually glued down the template to the um, piece of plastic pipe here and I've also drilled a very very small hole here right at the beginning of the first turn at the uh, top and the reason is I find it a lot easier if uh, you make a little right angle bend and insert your copper wire into that and then uh, you'll hold it in place while you start making all your turns and then you can actually stick it all down with some, I actually use some clear tape or you could use heat shrink to uh, actually hold all the coils in place but it just makes it a lot easier if you uh, put a small hole there to actually start you off so I'll put a little uh, bend on the end of the copper wire inserting it into that hole and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my thumb to keep pressure down as I turn the actual plastic pipe to make the coils so keeping the copper wire quite tight as you turn it around and just take your time So once you've got the coils done, then what I'm going to do is cut off here, leaving myself a nice bit there that I can uh, actually measure and cut later on. Okay, so what I've done now, I've actually pre-cut some lengths of the clear tape. And now I'm going to go around and make sure that each coil is perfectly lined up with the coils on the template. So I'm going to start at the top. And just keep manipulating it until you're happy and then put some of the tape to hold that coil in place So 
So if you kind of work the tape into the sides of the coil, just so it's well stuck down, and then move on to the next one. So they're all in place now, and I'm happy with that. Basically what you want to do is you just want to go around them all and just visually look, and you don't want to see any of the black line of the uh, template of the coil actually peeking through. You want uh, this copper wire totally covering that black line. So if it's like that, then you know you've got them all in the right place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually snip off this little uh, angle here that uh, I use to start myself off because having that angle going in there it can interfere with the circular polarization so I'm going to snip it off there and then I'm going to add some more tape over the top of this to uh, really hold it in place I mean of course you could put some uh, heat shrink tubing over the top of this now and uh, that will do a good job as well okay so now we're going to move on to the uh, actual reflector itself and I'm going to take the uh, tube in here and I'm going to draw a circle round and then uh, this aluminium is uh, thin enough to be able to cut out with some scissors. So I've cut out the reflector off the template and I'm going to actually stick that to the aluminium disc that I've just cut out just so I can see where my drill hole is going to be to fit my SMA connector in and obviously where I'm going to place glue down the actual uh, helical itself. So the panel mount is now in place and held in there by uh, the uh, actual uh, screws and nuts and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just checking and lining up the actual helical antenna with this centre connector here that we're going to be soldering onto and something that uh, you need to put in now that is really really important is you need to cut yourself a sliver of tin because we're going to have to solder to this and it's actually a triangle and it's five millimeters that way and it's 15 millimeters long it's uh, roughly about a third of a turn on your helical and what that's going to do it's going to match the impedance which the impedance of this is roughly at 75 ohms and it's going to bring it down to an impedance of 50 ohms which is what we need to actually feed into our coaxial cable so if you don't put this on and I have seen people um, make these and not um, use a sliver of uh, tin to bring the impedance down I'll guarantee that uh, the performance of the antenna will not be as good it uh, will lose a lot of its signal due to its uh, unmatched impedance so it's really important that we put this on so it's five, uh, it's five millimeters at the base here of the triangle and 15 millimeters up and then just cut a sliver of tin to make a triangle shape so actually soldering this on with it being a 5.8 gigahertz antenna it's so so small it's really fiddly but what I've done I've actually pre-tinned the wire and pre-tinned the little shim and I'm holding it on with some masking tape on the back which is this stuff I think in the US you call it painters tape but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, apply some heat and hopefully because I've already pre-tinned there we should get a uh, a nice connection so managed to solder that on there so what I'm going to do now is actually epoxy the coil in place exactly where I want it and then I'll very quickly with my soldering iron apply a little bit of heat on here to uh, solder it to the centre connector because I don't want to keep me soldering iron too long because the heat will travel up there and then uh, break all that solder connection that we've just made so you need to be really really careful at this point but uh, you can see there that's how the impedance matching works so I've soldered that up onto the centre connector of the SMA panel mount connector so uh, we've got a nice connection there now I've epoxied this on here and obviously this is the weakest part of the antenna at the moment so uh, we're going to have to strengthen that. So I've now got the rear reflector glued onto there but before I put the end cap on one thing I want to do with this antenna is I don't just want to put um, a nut or something like that on the bottom for uh, 
the normal joystick I use with my antennas because my friend's going to be using this for FPV, first person view I actually want some kind of U-shape and uh, connected on the side so you've got a lot of uh, axis and movement around so it's easily movable and uh, there's a shot on the inside all glued up so uh, what I'm going to do I'm actually going to use a uh, shatterproof ruler and bend that round on a U-shape it's the only piece of plastic I can find in my workshop at the minute that I do the job but uh, that should be a lot better for him so I've got the bracket in place and I am quite happy with that, it's turned out rather well. A um, couple of things to note though, I've actually used some plastic nuts and washers and screws on this because from experience using much longer ones, just by placing your hand over here can interfere with the helical itself and uh, metal objects also. Um, on the sides can cause interference with the way the helical works so always use plastic if you're uh, inserting something like this on the side on the back of the reflector it's okay to use a metal bracket if you want to uh, mount it that way but on the sides stick to plastic because it will interfere so now and what I'm going to do is epoxy around here and epoxy around the edge and put the end cap on place and it will also help support the uh, centre coil as well, stop that from moving around or um, snapping off if uh, you accidentally drop this so that's what I'm going to do next. So I've got the end cap and the reflector all sanded down now so it's nice and round I took the majority off with uh, the Dremel and then went in with some sandpaper or some emery paper sorry and uh, worked my way around to get it nice and uh, level with the actual cylinder itself so you just use the cylinder body as a guide to uh, bring that down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the bracket and I'm going to give all the body a good sand etc so we've got a nice key so we can add some paint to it. So here is the antenna, it's all painted and mounted on its tripod and uh, I'm quite pleased the way it uh, turned out. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it then please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you for the next one.